Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. I just took my shirt off, so if you're on YouTube, my nips are out. Mine are too. <laughs> my sun bleached salamis <laughs> are making an appearance on the tube. These pale, spicy slums. <laughs> We're going to just expose to the sun later. <laughs> it's like, okay, so today we're going to be talking about... Well, first of all, welcome back to Violating Community Guidelines. I said that. No, you didn't. Welcome back to Violating Community <laughs> Guidelines. With... Brittany. And Sarah. And today we're going to be talking about... Multi-level marketing schemes. <laughs> we know that Online. they're... <laughs> yeah, we know that they're not exclusive to the internet, but that's how people recruit, and we were going to talk uh -huh. about it. Also, we should do it on three. We're having a, a sody pop. If you fuck this up, one, two, three. <laughs> Brittany! My, my fat finger got stuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn, when was the last time you fucking bitches had a root beer? <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Actually, wait. Um, on a date, um, we Do made you want a, some? we made root beer floats. <gasps> We're not on a date right now. That sounds so delicious. I know. We should make it later when we go to the pool. Oh my god! <laughs> Dairy by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Cuzzo filling our guts with yeah. milk at the pool. <laughs> my, your one piece is just filled with methane gas. <laughs> Damaging the ozone at the pool. Dude, I went to the La Brea Tar Pits and I was like, that looks like Bernie's farts. Because <laughs> it was just like a black bubble. What, dude? You know, because like the... Okay, so... You think I'm shitting black in my underwear <laughs> instead of my fart? Dude, you literally earlier when we were rocking downstairs, you're like, you ever shit and it sounds like someone pouring something out of a measuring cup? And you think I, you think that black poop is like you know beyond you? I said you ever shit, and it sounds like you're pouring out a smoothie into a trash can. <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. We're not gonna talk about shit anymore. That's a damn lie. I'm not promising that. Okay. So um, I also want to say that. Um, fuck. What were we just talking about? Multi-level marketing. No, before that. <laughs> about. Never mind. Um, the, the pool? pool? Yeah. Throwing up. Oh, um, as a child, I'm assuming you've pooped at the pool. Not in the pool, but when you're at the pool. Oh, no, don't speak for me. Okay. I've, I've shit in the pool and the ocean. <laughs> you laid a turd on a public pool. It's make it a lake. I have shit on a lake, in a lake, kind of. You shit on a lake, Sarah? Oh, yeah. We were in Nova Scotia, and I couldn't hold it in anymore, and I was a child, and my dad was like, just go in the lake. Oh, okay. Well, that's different than like a grown Canada. adult. Yeah. yeah it, there are no rules in Canada. <laughs> um, I have vivid memories, and I still do this to this day, especially because now adults drink at the pool. Yeah. Drinking just gives me the shits in general. Being in a one piece, soaking wet. Yes. <laughs> Down the hallway into the public bathroom, like liquid diarrhea. -ing. Yes. And then you hear, oh, what was that in? <laughs> it smells so awful. And like, it's like something... the cement walls, and there's like two yes. inch gaps between like the doors and, and stuff. And there's no AC. Yeah. And it's so fucking hot. The worst thing also is when you're in there for so long, you get those rings on your ass, <laughs> and you have to put the one piece back on and go back out to the pool with like red cheeks. <laughs> That is a visceral childhood memory of mine. And that brings us right back to multi-level marketing. Yep. All right. <laughs> and let's it. get into the episode. So let's do a brief introduction. Would you like to take it away? Mm -hmm. um, multi-level marketing is an actual type of marketing, although it can be a strategy and success. It's a pyramid scheme. You know, like when you are, you hear someone say like, Dude, if you buy a certain amount of like, you know, Verve and then you get your friends involved and they sell a certain amount of Verve at the end of the month, you know, if you have enough points, <laughs> then you get your own car. And you can be your own boss. And yeah. You can just take vacation when you want. And mm -hmm. there's bonuses and there's all these benefits. And like, no. Yeah. I've I see a lot of people get the messages from like people online like, hey, girly, do you want to be your own boss and make your own hours? Yep. I've never gotten that. And if I have. You haven't? No, have you? You were in a sorority. Yeah, but I'm not close with any of them. Well, that's even better. They love to contact <laughs> yes, people like you. Yes. Estranged, not, uh, once friends. I am the last person they fucking contact. And they're like, who the fuck else gonna... <sighs> Sarah shower? <laughs> yes. I held her hair back when she vomited one time. That's not true. Out. They gave me hair ties. They didn't hold my hair at all. They didn't care enough to hold my hair. No, I do. I remember one time they lined up nine tequila shots for me. And then a couple girls handed me a hair tie and they were like, good luck. And then I blacked out and I came to You're 24 lying. hours later. I'm not. Dude, I've been, every, I feel like everyone's been hazed. Oh, I guess that is hazing. I've tried to haze you. But you How'd know, you do that? It just won't take. You still live with me. <laughs> 
Nothing I've done has worked. I'm trying to haze you, but you're just like so willing to do shit yeah. that you don't even realize you're being tortured. I just enjoy spending time with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet, though. Like, how do I turn her against me? <laughs> what would we do today, Sue? <laughs> I'm making you drink like a bottle of tequila and you're like, I just love hanging out. Like, this is so fun. <laughs> it's like I'm shitting through sifter. <laughs> we go to the pool later. We go to the pool. Okay. So there's, uh, do you want to do the introduction then? Yeah. So for those that are not familiar, have never been contacted by an MLM. Great beyond. Yeah. A recruiter. <laughs> yes. Businesses that involve, uh, an MLM is a business that involves selling products to family and friends and recruiting other people to do the same. Mm hmm. It's also called network marketing, direct marketing, etc. Some MLMs, not all, are illegal pyramid schemes. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. kind of, it's kind of confusing sometimes <laughs> when you see MLM because that's like, um, like man, man loving man. man. <laughs> yes, we're just we have we just should make this um, like MLM for like the title. So like every gay guy ever is like, oh, is this about me? <laughs> oh, Trixie made that TikTok one time that was like. Um, she was going through the playlists that her songs have been added to on Spotify, and she mm -hmm. took screenshots, and one of them was um, uh, Western MLM, <laughs> yeah. you know, like kind of country gay music, yeah. and it was like Casey Musgraves and Trixie Mattel, <laughs> and Trixie goes, multi-level marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Southern multi-level marketing? Yes. Gay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, multi-level marketing companies sell their products or services through person-to-person -person sales. Think Mary Kay Cosmetics, yeah. okay? If any of you guys have mothers or grandmothers who bought their makeup from other women, yeah. from their cars, from their homes, that is like the quintessential MLM. Mm -hmm. uh, that means you're selling directly to other people, maybe from your home, a customer's home, or online. If you join an MLM program, the company may refer to you as an independent distributor, participant, or contractor. Mm -hmm. And that is how they can operate <laughs> under this false promise of making your own hours mm -hmm. and being your own boss. And you can go on vacation whenever you want. Well, guess what? If you're on vacation all the time, mm -hmm. no one's there to, like, provide oversight. So you just simply don't make money. Yeah. I have you ever like bought from an MLM before? Never. I have, and I think I've told this story before, but um, it was like a like a sex toy company mm. where like this we our sorority like hosted this like sex toy event where like oh, oh well I've done that at a bachelorette yeah. party so I guess that I is I feel like that is not necessary. I feel like it could be a type of MLM because they come to your home. Do they try to recruit you? Um, no, I don't think so. Well, then I don't think that that was an MLM. That's just a, a private just seller. Some lady selling vibrators. That's just some fucking woman like, <laughs> you have not had an orgasm until you put this suction cup on your clit. That's just a net with the damn fucking <laughs> cart. <laughs> yes. Linda loves this job. Mm -hmm. She loves empowering women. But you know, like, um, that joke that we made, like, a couple, like, weeks ago, or, like, we talked about this joke where it's, like, guys take, um acid one time and develop like empathy yes. i buy a, a clit sucking vibrator one time and it's like i became sentient i was like oh my god nirvana yeah like the world just opened up and yeah. i have my third eye yeah so most mlms say you can make money in one of two ways by selling the products yourself to retail customers who are not involved in the mlm or by recruiting new distributors and earning commissions based on what they buy and their sales to retail customers. Wait, so I'm, that is the pyramid scheme aspect of I it. I might have been in an MLM now that I think about it. So, what was it? Um, in college at the Sun tan bed like place where i went mm. to go tanning they had verve on the counters all the time and i bought it's it verve. it's like a drink but i bought like a case and they told me to sell it i think i might have yeah it's definitely definitely oh my god and they would have made money off of whatever you sold that oh wow i wasn't an mlm for like Congrats. a second oh my gosh you're a businesswoman <laughs> i know a business they them business bitch <laughs> business bitch is uh what's that thing of where like it's gender neutral gender neutral yeah yeah so your recruits, the people they recruit, and so on, your littles, your mm -hmm. grand littles. <laughs> I have littles. Well, if you joined an MLM, you also would. Oh, wait, actually, that's kind of cute, then. <laughs> <laughs> your grand little, but you're like getting commission off the legwork they're doing. Mm -hmm. They become your sales network or quote unquote downline. Mm -hmm. If the MLM is not a pyramid scheme, it will pay you based on your sales to retail customers, period. That is the structure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to recruit anyone. Most people who join legitimate MLMs make little or no money. Go figure. Yeah. Some of them even lose money. 
because you have to buy your own product. And if you don't sell it, well, guess what? You're out money. And now you have all this fucking product that no one wants. Yeah. In some cases, people believe they've joined a legitimate MLM, but it turns out to be an illegal pyramid scheme that steals everything they invest and leaves them deeply in debt. Dude, that reminds me of the in Napoleon Dynamite when Uncle Rico buys all that Tupperware. Is yeah. that an MLM? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he just like backed over it, then he ran away. Yeah. Do you want to know? So I genuinely, and I'm so thankful for my parents because I literally was so. It, it's one of these experiments in like persuasion and manipulation. Mm -hmm. I was 19, 20 years old, um, freaking out about not having a job lined up after college. Mm -hmm. I was recruited uh, or contacted by this old like this dude I went to high school with who I used to have a crush on. Yeah. And he was probably two, three years older than me, and he was working for this company. And he was like, yeah, we're having a an info session. Like, come and grab a brochure, sit down. We'll give the presentation. You ask mm -hmm. any questions you have. And I was like, okay. We sit down. It's this. It's They're marketing it as you get to travel across the United States to uh -huh. places you've never been before. You make incredible friends. You go on retreats. You're selling. You're making so much money in commissions. Mm -hmm. All this is paid for. If you make Winter Circle, you get to do da 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 Just like swimming in money. Yeah. The job? Selling textbooks door to door. Oh, sh textbooks? Textbooks. Door to door. First of all, what fucking textbooks yeah. that aren't required by like a college or a high school? Just textbooks. Going door to door. It, and that's, <clears throat> do you want to learn biology? That was literally it. Or how about the word of God? Yeah, it wasn't even like <laughs> McGraw Hill. Yeah. Like actually what US schools use. It was just textbooks. Yes. Anyone could have written them. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, that seems a little iffy, but everything else sounds so fun. Uh huh. They take us um, into these rooms. Well, first of all, they're like, any questions? My hand shoots up because yeah. I'm like, well, what the, What about like lodging and air travel? And yeah. what if you don't sell all the stuff? And they're answering them in kind of a padded way of like, oh, well, you would pay for your travel, uh -huh. of course. But, you know, you can carpool. Make it better. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then they're like, um, yeah, and if you don't end up selling all the product, you would owe us money. But that doesn't really happen. It doesn't happen a lot. And yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> And so because I was one of the people asking questions, they took me into a back room and, and they, they were beat like, you. and they beat me with a, a stick. Yeah. And a textbook. <laughs> a textbook. <laughs> that you had to buy. <laughs> that you had to buy. And at the end, they asked me for money. Yes. Um, no, they took me into a back room and they were like, we loved the way that you were asking questions and you were so engaged during yes. the presentation. We'd like to consider you for a, for a, a role. And yeah. I was like, little old me. <laughs> I was so like, oh my God, they know me. They see me. I'm a hard worker. Yeah. I called my parents after they were like, well, you know, you have the offer. Like yeah. this is a real job offer. So let us know. You have 24 hours before we rescind it. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, oh, fuck me. This is my, this is my job. I've lined it up after college. <laughs> I call my parents on the drive home and I'm like, yeah, so it's um selling textbooks. <laughs> and they're like, Brittany, it's a no girl. I had no idea my parents and I was trying to convince them and I guess myself too of like I can do it I know yeah. I can do it they said I can do it yeah no 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 this is literally that is like textbook yeah. MLM <laughs> Text it's a textbook it was selling a textbook MLM <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It you was know awful. What, you know what? I don't understand. Like the vacuum salespeople who go door mm -hmm. to door. Mm -hmm. Like how how effective? Like how often is someone like, yeah, dude, I'll buy a fucking vacuum. You know you're right. My house is kind of dirty. I'll take it. How many you got? <laughs> oh, now that I think about it, my Dyson is kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, come in, show me. But also the idea of inviting someone in. In I yeah. feel like that was more understandable in the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. which is when a lot of this worked. Because it was very were... hard to solve murders. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, she invited him into her house and the rest is history. Yes. We'll never know. Dude, isn't it crazy that like if you got, if you were a murderer who got caught like 50 years ago, you actually were just a fucking idiot. Yeah. Because there was no like fingerprint. I mean, no there DNA. was like fingerprints, but like, yeah. Yeah. You'd have to be so incredibly stupid yeah. to get caught as a murderer. You would almost want to get caught. Yeah. <laughs> Like leaving behind that many clues. Yes. Like blues clues. <laughs> Who done it? <laughs> anyway. 
For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. I know I took French, and that's the second most spoken language in Louisiana and New England, and I've never lived in either of those areas, so it really was for naught. Now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time. What a great way to spend free time. Babbel teaches bite-sized language language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I chose Babbel because I'm trying to learn German because I am German and it feels like I should have some culture in my life. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over a hundred language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, German, and Italian. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcast games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash VCG. That's babbel.com slash VCG for up to 60% off of your subscription. Babbel, language for life. So I kind of want, I want to talk about pyramid schemes because okay. that is the real mm-hmm. kind of what is is really happens online. Yeah. Um, pyramid schemes are scams. Mm-hmm. They can look remarkably like legitimate MLM business opportunities and they often sell actual products, maybe even ones you've heard of. But if you become a distributor for a pyramid scheme, it can cost you and your recruits, often your family and friends, because who's who are you going to recruit? Yeah. Well, the people in your immediate network. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost you a lot of time and money that you won't get back. Yeah. And Stanley included some warning signs here to not get looped into a pyramid scheme if you'd like to read that. Oh, so that was from FTC Consumer Advice. Which is like legit. We do have to, um, the... A lot of our information is from FTC Consumer Advice. We yeah. do have to let them know. Yeah, this isn't from, like, Wikipedia. This is from, like, legitimate yeah, yeah. Re- research articles. This is the warning sign. I feel like, well, here's the thing. So usually it is your family and friends. Like, But then also the internet just made it easy to, like, reach out to literally... Anyone. Acquaintances, anyone you've ever, like, you know, like, you're, like, a happy birthday post on someone's Facebook. Happy birthday! By the way, you ever thought about being your own boss? Looking for a job? <laughs> celebrate the new birthday whatever the fuck yeah but the warning signs are promoters make extravagant promises about your earning potential stop those promises are false yeah dude i've been a a lot of interviews and i think whenever they like you know they've never like promised that i'll be earning a fuck ton of money if anything they like skirt around talking about money you know yeah so if they're super excited to talk about money there's something wrong Mm, they're lying yeah. <laughs> no job would be like, we're going to give you so much money. We're going to treat you so well. We love you. <laughs> yes. Bring it in. Yes. <clears throat> Never. And then promoters emphasize recruiting new distributors for your sales networks uh, as the real way to make money. Walk away. In a legitimate MLM program, you should be able to make money just by selling the product. Oh, wait. So, okay. No, it was an MLM, the vibrator sales lady, because she was just straight up selling the product. She wasn't trying to, like, recruit the entire sorority to, like, sell vibrators for her. Mm. Yeah. Um. How crazy is that to think that, like, your job is done after you've recruited three more people to work for that company? Yeah. So you can just sit back, relax, kick your feet up with an iced tea and have them do all the legwork. Yeah. How does that even work out? I don't... I feel like that's so unfair. Yeah. Someone... You're doing all the work and someone else is taking your profit because they recruited you? (laughs) What the fuck, bitch? Dude, I was about to be like, what stupid fucking idiot falls for an MLM? And I just realized (laughs) I was in one for, like, a little bit. (laughs) I, I didn't even know I was until just now. What idiot would fall for that? <laughs> a selling it? verb yes. of vibrators and textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Or vibrators and textbooks. All at the same time. I've got them all in my car <laughs> yes. right now. Come on, Aunt Betty. <laughs> you want to be jacked up on like sugar when you read. <laughs> Shaking, <laughs> coming, jacked up, and, <laughs> and reading a textbook. Or, orgasming, shaking, yes. and going to town on that John Green novel. <laughs> um, promoters play on your emotions or use high pressure sales tactics. That worked on me. Hold a gun to your head. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yes. Under the table. I have a loaded revolver under this table right now. You walk out of here with your life and some textbooks, or you don't walk out of here at all. There are three snipers pointing <laughs> directly at you. The right window now. behind me <laughs> is open for a reason. <laughs> There's a red dot on your forehead. 
<laughs> is she going to shoot me? <laughs> then throw me out the window. <laughs> Make it look like an accident. <laughs> like your head accidentally exploded. All right, so maybe saying you'll lose the opportunity if you don't act now and discouraging you from t- um, taking time to study the company. Yeah, they give you 24 exactly hours. exactly what happened to me. They were like, you know, these positions go fast. Yeah. So if you don't, we only have a select number of, of positions. I was like, oh, me, 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 me. I think Dude. I got selling verve because it was like an extra tanning package. <laughs> Like a free spray tan. At Hell least yeah. you were going to go home and mull it over. Mm. I was like, free spray tan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sell my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Punched your card. Yeah. What free spray tan? <laughs> um, any company that tries to pressure you to join one, uh, join is one to avoid. Yeah. Um, and the distributors buy more products than they want to use or can resell just to stay active in the company or to qualify for bonuses or other rewards. Just cars full <laughs> yes. of uh, melting in the sun. LuLaRoe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone here a size four? <laughs> I've got about 30 sweats you might like. <laughs> and then um, the promoters of a pyramid scheme may try to recruit you with pitches about what you'll earn. Mm-hmm. Um, they may say you can. they can change your life, quit your job, and even get rich by selling the company's products. Yeah, that's when you know it's like fake. And how sad is that, that people are offering you what seems like an escape? Yeah. From the corporate shackles yes. that you're destined to enter into like after college or after high school is like, I'm offering you a ticket yeah. to be your own boss. You don't have to be a slave to the nine to five and you do it. And I would argue that these people are more fucking miserable at mm-hmm. the end of the month or the quarter when they're sitting there like, I have sold one vacuum. Yeah. I have 39 in my home. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck needs a vacuum? <laughs> like, you're just out, shit out of luck. Yes. How dismal is that existence? <laughs> Someone take a fucking vacuum off my hands. Please, God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> I know you don't have dirty houses and buy a fucking vacuum. You know, like after Thanksgiving, you have like leftovers for a month. <laughs> That's that same. Like that when she opens her front door every day, she's like, <laughs> those <laughs> fucking vacuums are still here. Oh my God. She's got Dyson tattooed <laughs> yeah. across her chest. You know, like those guys who get like their last name on their like their shoulders, like across their back. <laughs> she just at the beach it says Tyson. <laughs> Tyson's little bitch. <laughs> Tyson's little bitch. That's literally you, you little Dyson bitch. You love vacuums, don't you, little whore? <laughs> Your income would be based mostly on how many people you recruit, not mm-hmm. mu- not how much product you sell. Yeah. Pyramid schemes are set up to encourage everyone to keep recruiting people to keep a constant stream of new distributors and their money flowing into the business. It's a constant cycle. (laughs) Everyone's selling vacuums. The whole United States. It's like Mormonism. It's like an evangelical (laughs) religion. You just want everyone to sell fucking vacuums. I was going to say, this sounds like COVID spread. You know, like (laughs) everyone everyone was like, um, no, COVID's only on a... COVID is only going to last like two weeks. And then you look at like fucking MLMs. They like spread like fucking. I, you know what? My brain cells are not connecting. There was the thought I get there. where you were going. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one after the other after the other. Yeah. It's like how could it spread so fucking fast? But yeah. It's it's funny to think that like that really is the model. Yeah. It's just like let's keep it going. COVID is an MLM. It, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. An MLM that but no one wants to buy what they're selling. <laughs> yes. But we got it anyway, yeah. huh? I mean, I think that's most people who are in a fucking pyramid scheme. Yeah. Honestly, I've been I've watched my parents. Parents do that. Girl Scouts are in it, <laughs> by the way. Are they? Think about it. Oh, but You're I... recruiting other Girl Scouts to go sell those fucking cookies? Yeah. Well, I mean, no, that's just like part of they're trying to earn money. And, and they have to, to... Don't they have to buy the cookies to sell them back? I don't think they have to buy the cookies originally. Oh. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts of America? Let I would die on the hill that Girl Scouts are an MLM. I can't even type because I've had no water, only caffeine today. I'm in all caps. Are the Girl Scouts... Girl Scouts, MLM, where are they? Where are the Girl Scouts? Google search. Alexa, where no, are the Girl Scouts? No, Girl Scouts cookies are not an MLM. They Liar. do not recruit people to sell under them. Yeah, because the Girl Scouts are literally like five years old. Right, <laughs> me, no! This farting. is an enclosed space. You can't be farting. It's smell. I farted yesterday. It smelled like fish and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Expired. I said earlier, we were in the bathroom and I peed and it was like carbonated. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Oh, my God. Dude. I do think Girl Scouts are an MLM because you enlist your parents it's, to help you. But it's not like that's like box tops, you know, like it's just like a way to raise money, you know. For what? They're like The trips. lizard people overlords. <laughs> They're 
their trips to like SeaWorld and shit. Oh. I don't know where they go, the camping. <laughs> Googling, where do the Girl Scouts go? <laughs> Once they Heaven or hell? <laughs> all dogs go to heaven, all Girl Scouts go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've only had caffeinated beverages. I'm gonna fart soon too. But you want some of my root beer? <laughs> I want some of your. Can I some your water? You can, you can use this as a cup too. <laughs> Bidet. Wait, no. Can I just mouth it? Sure, but you can also drink out of that. But I want to put my lips on yours. <laughs> I don't want that. You're farting in here, and like me putting your my lips on. We're actually, farting yeah. And tongue in each other <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> All right, moving on. We're farting each other? We're farting and tonguing each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We've had only caffeine. I feel like I can hear colors. I'm running on like two hours of sleep. Yeah, I've had so much caffeine today. <laughs> I'm running on farts. Okay. All right. <laughs> also, I went to Texas A&M. Did if you? you guys did not know that, I would like to talk about it a little more. Okay. Um. <laughs> I had people reach out to me, people who I was like briefly in a class with, yeah. like I maybe made eye contact with them twice in my life, yeah. reach out to me on Facebook and be like, hey, girly. Yeah. That, that I have been victim to those messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never responded, though. <laughs> but that's Texas A&M, dude. Well, you were you got solicited too. Yeah. It's a big thing in Southern schools. It really is. I wonder, I kind of wonder, if you guys go to schools on like the West Coast or like northeast do yeah, you get I mean, like recruited by people a lot i want to know yeah also how big is greek life on the west coast uh, i think pretty pretty decent like yeah. it, i don't know about like the northeast so much those people seem depressed i mean you depressed people join sororities oh, no 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 i'm sure there's like good greek life up there <laughs> yes yeah maybe i'm just assuming we should go to uh, university of washington university that's the west coast what no, dude, then Greek. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, East Coast, it's huge. I'm asking West Coast. Yeah, like sorry. Like California and like Oregon. Are y'all just like cutting it up with I think fucking California, definitely. Greek life? I know Arizona is huge. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I Often in a pyramid scheme, you'll be encouraged or even required to buy a certain amount of product at regular intervals. Even if you already have more inventory than you can use or sell. Jesus. You may even have to buy products before you're eligible to be paid or get certain bonuses. Dude, it's like Uno. Like, we're like, you have to draw four, but you keep drawing four. Just got a handful of vacuums. <laughs> I've got 75 fucking vacuums. Literally. You may also have to pay repeated fees for other items, like training sessions or expensive marketing materials. In addition, the company may say you can earn lavish rewards like prizes, bonuses, exotic vacations, and luxury cars. A pizza party. <laughs> Literally a pizza party and they wheel in the TV. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're going to have a sub today. <laughs> However, it often turns out that you have to meet certain product purchase, recruitment, training, or other goals to qualify for the rewards. No duh. All right. So we kind of want to... Oh, sorry. My brain shut off. I was trying to say... Eventually, most distributors find that no matter how hard they work, they can't sell enough inventory or recruit enough people to actually make a livable wage. Mm -hmm. They also can't keep up with the required fees or the inventory purchases they need to make to qualify for any type of reward or vacation. They can't even make enough money to cover their expenses. In the end, most people run out of money, have to quit, and lose everything they invested. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! <laughs> well, damn, that sucks. But I mean, like, honestly, most people working a nine to five experience some sort of like similar, not like where they don't qualify for these vacations. I feel like every, like most jobs have like a really shitty aspect to them. Yeah. You know, like it's either this or, you know, a nine to five. We just stare at the wall all fucking day. Yeah. Crunch this is numbers. Another form of living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. except you can't blame the company. You blame yourself yeah. because you can't fucking do it because who can sell 89 <laughs> vacuums in a month? <laughs> Very few people. I couldn't even sell 30 cans of verb. <laughs> I couldn't sell ice to someone living in Antarctica. <laughs> well, yeah. They, I've like, now <laughs> realized that that <laughs> statement, that yeah. analogy only works if you're trying to say they're a really good salesman. Yeah, you could. Uh, they I could, could sell, sell ice, ice to a penguin. Yeah. <sighs> Stupid. Wow. All right. I would like to pass the torch to um, a one Sarah Shower. Who will tell you guys about pyramid schemes on social media? All right, so I am that Sarah Shower. 
Uh, <laughs> this is via the FTC consumer advice. Um, social media can be a great way to connect with friends while the pandemic has you keeping your distance. But reports to FTC's consumer sentinel Sentinel Network suggests that social media websites and apps have become popular hangouts for scammers too. No shit. Imagine Stanley that. Stanley wrote no shit. I wrote that. Oh, you wrote no <laughs> shit. <laughs> Imagine people online are looking to lie, cheat, and steal. Yeah, dude, I experienced that very like at a very young age with Neopets. Someone was like, "Hey, I want to help you like get something," and then they I sent my password and my username, and then they Rob. just stole all my fucking Neopets. Yeah. Dude, do you ever think about like your Neopets are probably still alive and they're starving? Yeah, my webkins are all dead. It's been like 11 years. <laughs> Nintendogs? Yeah, I've never had those. You didn't have a D- uh, DS? No, um, mom and dad didn't want us to play with the, that type of but stuff. But you were watching Two Girls, One Cup and Blue Waffle on the internet and going on Omegle when you were 14. Okay, yeah. I, I said <laughs> but I had, you couldn't play fucking Nintendogs. I had the internet, not a DS. <laughs> If they put Two Girls, One Cup out on DS, <laughs> then yeah, I wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> it's platform specific. Yeah. That's wait, fair. Was the DS that thing where you could write messages? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. No, I did have one of those. It was, it flipped up and yeah. you had a little stylus. Yeah. And you'd go on like car rides with your family and yeah, your brother would DS. connect and you'd be like, hey, fucking ugly Pick piece no of chat. shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. But when, I don't, I don't remember Nintendogs. Nintendogs was a, a game. Well, I, oh, no, sorry. I was thinking about a Game Boy. You didn't have a Game Boy? Um, I had my brother's, but he didn't like when I used it. I had both. Oh. Oh. The Air Force family. (laughs) (laughs) We We probably had an identical... uh, Upbringing. Upbringing, like, financially-wise. Because your parents were very well-to-do, well-off. Yeah, but they always told us that they were poor. Yeah, my parents did, too. Mm -hmm. They lied. Like, we're fucking scrambling. Like, my mom was a couponer. Yeah. First of all, do you say coupon? Coupon, yeah. I say coupon. Coupon? Why? Because it's just what my brain says to say. Years of inbreeding. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're related. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, we don't know. That's a great response. I do this. Why? Years of inbreeding? Why do you think that? I mean, we both have blue eyes. That's definitely like a sign of inbreeding. It's true. Of um, uh, weakness. <laughs> yes. You got blue eyes, you fucking weak idiot. Yes. I mean, someone was cousins at cer- like a certain point. We don't know. What were you just saying? I was saying um, Wait, is we that a- grew up thinking that our parents were poor when yeah. in reality they were making good money. Is that a type of financial abuse in which you have a lot of money and you're not you're not supposed to talk about finances with your kids? Yeah. Like you're not supposed to stress them out, especially like at a very young age. And my parents would always say stuff like, "We don't have any money." Like you know, like we're really like, uh, like uh, we can't afford that. We can't afford pennies. that. And they're talking about like food. And so now here I am, eight years old, stressing out over if we can eat a meal. Mom comes home with a brand new fucking car. But I kind of, I was just wondering if that's a type of financial abuse. I think that's a type of child abuse. Oh, dude, I can go on for fucking days. <laughs> well, we know that you were abused. <laughs> yes. That's not a disputed fact. <laughs> There's like a compilation video of like, my parents fucking hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we mention a burner account, you're like, it's my mom. Yeah. No, or like we d- someone did like the dick counter for, um, yeah. we did the, uh, the Omegle, Omegle and yeah. chat roulette and they did a dick counter you for us. You had like 26, I had like six. Yeah. I said yeah. dick so many times. But going back to pyramid schemes on social media. Yes. This started all with Nintendogs and then Sorry, it spiraled. Guys. But yes, Us bonding. Um, so it says uh, reports that people lost money to scams that started on social media more than tripled in the past year with a sharp increase in the second quarter of 2020. So, yeah, because like everyone is getting let go because of fucking covid struggling to find money, doing yeah. anything at whatever cost. It would make sense that they would join a pyramid scheme. Um, and so then reports about scams that start on social media have increased for years. In 2019, total reported losses to these frauds reached one hundred thirty four million dollars. But reported wow. losses reached record highs, claiming to be nearly 117 million in just... It sounded like you farted into a toilet bowl. <laughs> that came out of your mouth. Just burping into the air. You should do sound effects. Climbing to nearly 117 million in just the first six months of Holy 2020. Fuck. Yeah, dude. Um, in that time, the reported scams that started on social media often related to online shopping, romance scams, and supposed economic relief or income opportunities. How sad is that? You think you're getting a fucking COVID relief check and it's just people stealing your money. I figured to say, how sad is that you're th- you think you're getting a boyfriend? <laughs> you just get scammed <laughs> out of millions? Uh-huh. No, yeah, that is fucking sad. I remember that. Like, because, um, I don't know, the whole COVID relief shit. 
It was pitiful. Yeah, it really was. There was no relief. And then people had to pay it back in taxes. I was <laughs> like, they don't already don't have the money. How do you expect them to pay it back? It's it's a dismal Fuck you. existence. Our government is the ultimate pyramid scheme. It really is. There uh, we go. Um, um, so here's some tips to steer clear of a pyramid scheme, if you guys are interested. Before you buy, based on an ad or a post, check out the company. Type its name in a search engine with words like scam or complaint. Never send money to a love interest you have not met in person. (laughs) Unless you want to. I'm not going to tell you how to live. I have sent money to people that I've dated. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. For what? I've paid exes rent. Yeah, dude. It's because you're a loving person and they take advantage of it. They don't take advantage of it. They just need help, you know? And, and they it's pay like, you back? It, no, but it's hard times, you know? Hmm. Okay, well, let's... <laughs> I've paid friends rent. Mm-hmm. But that's, yeah, see, like, it's it's a normal thing to do. It's, it is, um, it's a difficult thing. Mm-hmm. When you see your friends struggling and you have the means to help. Mm-hmm. But I also have had friendships where they're looking for an enabler. Yeah. And I've been that enabler. Yeah. Where they are not going to get up on their feet and make moves in their life to serve themselves in the future because people like you and me are going to take care of them. And I I think that it's, it's a good quality to have. If you have the means to help someone in your life out like that, do it. But someone who's a repeat offender, Mm -hmm. that's different. Yeah. And I've had friends like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Yeah. I don't know if I've had friends like that now. I've just, I, yeah. 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 I'm just going to cut it off right there. (laughs) I can't say anything Don't else. send money to a love interest unless you want to. <laughs> yes. If you get a message from a friend about a way to get some financial relief, call them. Did they forward it to you? If not, tell them that their account may have been hacked. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been hacked? Um, Have I ever been hacked? My Neopets. Um, have yeah, I, yeah, I guess that does count. Have you ever been hacked? No. Knock on wood. Wait, no. My wood. I've never been hacked. Ooh. You see my butt. You see my panty lines. <laughs> okay, come on. Sorry. I like wearing um, very full coverage underwear. I do too. Because ever since I started um, the TSA, people were like, your underwear is too tight. Yeah, your I've... crotch is on fire. Mm-hmm. I started wearing like looser underwear. I've always worn looser underwear. I've got a lot going on down there. I need a full absorbent <laughs> cotton underwear to soak up everything, dude. And I piss a lot. I pee myself when I laugh. Dude. So I need something with like a built-in diapy. You have <laughs> God, to get diapers. <laughs> I love pissing myself. Oh, man. I actually hate pissing myself. And this is yeah. very... <laughs> I'm, I'm different. I hate pissing I myself. I do hate having piss in my underwear and like no, having to like act like you don't. Yeah. They don't know I have piss in my underwear right now. <laughs> That's been me for like, I'd say probably 20% of my life. You know those like movie scenes where it's like you wish you could know what other people think? Yeah. And then they walk by you. It's like, no one knows I have pee in my underwear right I, now. I'm walking around like this. <laughs> Like, what the fuck's your problem? It's like... completely wet around your crotch. <laughs> I, have, I have literally, <laughs> I have literally been at parties, yeah. or like on a friend's couch or something, and it's so humiliating. <laughs> Emmy Hartman, if you're listening, I'm sorry. This is about you. I have been Ooh. on Emmy's couch on her floor in her car, peed, yeah, from laughing, uh huh, peed, and had to literally get up or swipe. <laughs> My butt across, and there's a wet spot. <laughs> yes. And I've also vomited on her floor. Jeez. And I've just, like, really let my body go around Amy Hartman, and I'm just, like, super sorry. But I don't know what it is about, like, I, I wish I could control it better. I just laugh so hard. You ever t- you've never peed so hard? Oh, no, Laugh dude. so hard you peed? Yeah, dude, all the time. I'm nearing, like, retirement. Are you serious? Uh, yes, I've yes. peed. I, uh, yes. Yes, one more for the pissers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one's for you piss girls. <laughs> It's funny <laughs> until it smells. It's funny until it's you're not like yeah. yeah. Uh, we were we were somewhere sometime, yes. and we came home and we were about to film a video together. And I was like, Sarah was like, let's film at seven. And I was like, okay. And I <laughs> went to the bathroom. She thought I was just peeing. <laughs> she heard the shower turn on. I thought like you're t- we don't have time to like shower and get ready. <laughs> I was rinsing off because I pissed. In the car. Oh my god. And then we went up there to film and I completely had to like wash and change my pants. Dude, you own a Lincoln and you're peeing in the car? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get cloth seats for a reason, yeah. brother. All right, anyway, pyramid schemes. <laughs> They're moisture wicking. <laughs> they are. 
<laughs> There's an air conditioner to dry in the seat to dry your piss when you pee. Um, wait, what were we looking at? Money lost. Oh yeah, yeah. Tips to steer clear. Um, don't make it easy for scammers to target you. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Check your social media privacy settings to limit what you share publicly. Oh fuck no. I have totally fucked up. I am the exact opposite of like what they tell you to do on social media. Yeah. Like I am just like posting everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the information is overwhelming now, you know? Well, and it's also a trend to trauma dump and overshare online. That is the key to being relatable. Yeah. If you don't do it enough, then you're cryptic and people don't fuck with you if you do it. Way- I don't think there is a level of doing it too much. Because mm-hmm. people even in the comments trauma dump. Yeah, they really I got do. broken up with the day and my grandma died and my dog died and I wanted to kill myself, but I watched your video and I feel a little better. Yeah. It's like, whoa, <laughs> dude. Or like you'll see like those um cute like videos where it's like a daughter and the dad and like the dad uh, took the... Jesus fucking Christ. The dad <laughs> took the daughter to the mall and got her like hair done. And then there's people in the comments like, my dad's dead. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. It's like, oh, wow. That's why you didn't take it to Claire's. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. I don't know when that became a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say like with social media. So in the past, but it like didn't five used years. to be like that. Like yeah. in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, YouTube comments weren't like that. YouTube comments were hellish. Those no YouTube comments were actually worse. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so now it's gone from like just slurs. Yeah. And just like this video sucked ass. I fucked your mom. Yeah. To like now it's people being like. I'm sad. <laughs> someone fucked my mom. Yeah, someone fucked my mom. It's that same dude. Yes. I only lashed out because someone fucked my mom. <laughs> You're projecting. Like, literally. It's you like, go to a therapist and they're like, so why do you keep telling people that like, you know, you're going to fuck their mom? You're going to. Oh my God. Because people keep fucking my mom. That's their breakthrough in therapy yeah. that day. Yes. That's literally it. Is people are so, and I sound like, my mother Mm -hmm. people are so sensitive online these days Mm -hmm. and i think that it's uh, It's both sides to the coin yeah it's a different type of sensitivity Mm -hmm. where they think everything is catered to them like dude i started posting about legos a lot because i fucking love legos Mm -hmm. i know legos is not plural it's lego shut the fuck up i will kill myself no there's multiple no but lego the brand is uh not plural and so like i started posting about it and i was like here's a set that i really like but there are, I know that this one's expensive, but there are sets that are like 30 to $40 at Target. Some girl called me classist because she could not personally afford a $40. I was like, I'm not telling you if you can't afford Legos. That you're not worth being a, a You can't livable. vote? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can't afford to get in a Legoland? You're not a fully realized adult unless you can buy Legos. Rights revoked. It's yeah. like, no, dude, I'm not, it's not, cla- I was just saying that gay people should like Legos because mm-hmm. it's a, a form of escapism, you know, yeah. and it's like pretty and shit. Yeah. No, I'm classist. It's the same thing as when I made fun of fucking TJ Maxx. I was like, TJ Maxx, people leave picture frames on the ground and they called me classist because they're like, some people can't afford to shop other places. I'm not saying you're... S- like a unworthy of life if you can't like shop anywhere else i'm yeah. saying every tj maxx is just so disorganized it's liminal it's yeah. a liminal space yes um that's the confusion i think that happens is like just because you're talking about something doesn't mean that you're sh- talking down on it yeah you know like it's called observational comedy yeah fucking google it yes i'm not shitting on you and your lifestyle i'm saying that yeah. i too have been to a tj maxx <laughs> and i feel like i don't know where i am your, li- it- your lifestyle is just going to tj maxx and not having legos <laughs> <Yes>. Loser! <laughs> can you say poor <laughs> no it's like I wasn't even, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, they put words in your mouth. Yeah. And then you get canceled by trying to be like, I didn't say that. Yeah. So you're going to gaslight us? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? You didn't say it, but you suggested it. Now I'm like fucking like knee deep in therapy. Yeah. Now you're suddenly number one capitalist in the <laughs> United States. Um, <laughs> now I'm into a pyramid scheme. Uh, mm-hmm. Pyramid schemes are doomed to fail because their success depends on the ability to recruit more and more investors. Since there are only a limited number of people in a given community, all pyramids in the schemes, world. I would just throw my net wide. Like if I was really into like pyramid schemes, I'd just go on my Twitter and like I'd be like, "Who wants to make their own money?" But if you don't have that wide audience, well, I would just. But then I'd start replying to famous people. 
Hey, mm. Megan, the stallion, if you will. Um, would Meg, you like to? If you will. <laughs> I have some vacuums and verve. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I feel like you could really like, you're a businesswoman. Tw- DM me your address and I will come. <laughs> yes. And you can look at my inventory. We can discuss some numbers. <laughs> yes. She blocks you. Yes. <laughs> the only people who make money are the few who are at the top of the pyramid. Uh. <laughs> like with any fucking job, yeah. any job, or just any traditional cheerleading pyramid. Yeah, the girls at the bottom get crushed. Yeah, and then the one girl at the top is like the one who gets the pose for the fucking picture. Yeah, yeah. That is that why it's called that? The pyramid, yes, because they stack on top of each other in a pyramid shape. I've learned so much today. I learned that I was in an MLM, and then you learned what a pyramid was. <laughs> dude, we have talked about Egyptology so much. We have? Yeah, dude. What okay, you have, about I have vomits, you have your cannibal cookbook, <laughs> and we also talk Wood about chips. Yes, Egyptology a lot. When the fuck have we talked about Egyptology? Roll the clips. <laughs> I know. I would like to see the clips. Uh, we're not going to incorporate it in the podcast, but like, I know on YouTube I could find at least like three references of where you say Egyptology. <laughs> okay. You love to lie on my name. Okay, there are some pyramid example, pyramid scheme examples, pyramid examples. It's just Giza. <laughs> <laughs> I just put up pictures of famous pyramids. Yes. Machu Picchu, um, fucking the Luxor in s- Vegas. See, the real issue is how do you sell this? Right, <laughs> right. You? There's yes. no doors or windows. Yes. I've had so much caffeine. I feel like I'm literally going insane, and so little sleep. There is so much bubbles in my gut. My asshole is whispering. <laughs> How do you highlight something? Brittany is working on highlighting things, and I'm just going to talk about my indigestion problems. <laughs> Dude, I can't even lie down flat anymore because <laughs> all the vomit just puddles in my mouth. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Okay, I'm really happy that you didn't listen. Thank God no one else is listening. <laughs> Thank God this isn't a podcast. Yes. All righty then. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about Mary Kay Consulting. Yeah, so here's really yes the point of this episode is we want to talk about some famous pyramid scheme examples. Mm-hmm. We've covered, let's do a quick recap. MLMs. Pyramid, pyramid schemes. schemes. Online MLMs. <laughs> online pyramid schemes. Hey, girly. Hey, girly. Have you ever thought about being your own boss? Facebook DMs. Be mm-hmm. your uh, CEO. Yeah. All right, so now let's get into the most <laughs> famous MLM, which is... You okay? Yeah, my skin just flaked off. <gasps> I do that too. I was fixing my bangs and little flakes came out and I was like, that's you, fucking gross. Do you, huh? have, do you have dandruff? No, I haven't washed my hair in six days. Oh, well, It's dry shampoo. It looks great though. Thank you so much. That's crazy. I, like When you walked out of your room this morning, I was like, wow, it looks really nice. You're lying. No, I'm not because it looked like little Bo Peep. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, it looked like a wig. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah. It technically is. Mary, well, yeah, it's a half wig. Uh, all right, here we go. Mary Kay Consulting. Mary Kay Consulting. Mary Kay sells cosmetics through an MLM model. Mary Kay distributors called beauty consultants can potentially make income by directly selling to people in their community and also receive a commission when they recruit others to start selling under their network. While the company has never confirmed or denied that it had been investigated by the SEC, according to a tw- the Southeastern Conference, it's the football <laughs> <Yes>. team. <laughs> Mary Kay football oh, yeah. team. <laughs> Mary Kay football. Mary Kay University. (laughs) According to a 2012 article in Harper's (laughs) Magazine, Mary Kay avoids being classified as an illegal pyramid scheme because of very specific language. Sounds like Twitter. Mm -hmm. For instance, the company doesn't require that its salespeople buy inventory, but there are benefits to doing so. Mm. And well, also, how the fuck are you going to sell the product unless you have it with you? Yeah. And the FTC says that receiving commissions based on actual product sales is legal. However, according to the article, the majority of sales occur between company and salespeople oh and God. not the consumer. How does that majority of sales occur between company and then the salespeople? I feel like Mary Kay is actually a very popular type of like cosmetic. It, it used to be, I would say. Really? Because this existed before online shopping. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I kind of... I kind of like Mary Kay. Like a I've little never bit. used it. My stepmom and my grandparents use it. Yeah, my um, most of my mom's side uses like Mary Kay. Mm. I wonder if it's even a good product or is it just like that's what they grew up using and they don't really want to, you know, switch up their beauty routine. Yeah, it's like my mom only uses like Clinique and like mm-hmm. I know that Clinique is good, but there's also a lot better stuff than Clinique. Right. But she's just been using it for like thirty years. Yeah, Estee Lauder is another one like that. Estee it's Lauder's like they used so, to yeah. sell it in Macy's, and that's yeah. really where like. 
my grandma and all them that's mm-hmm. where they used to shop yeah so merle norman's another skincare <laughs> what is merle norman Merle norman is another like old woman skincare brand <laughs> <laughs> it's where i got my ears pierced for the first time i don't know <laughs> for the second time because i got my ears pierced first time at claire's they got all green and bubbly and had to let them close up got infected because they pierce your ear with like a fucking it's like not even metal the metal disintegrates in your ear a fork prong <laughs> Pierce your ear with a like a toothpick. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I got my ears pierced the second time. Um, so that's Mary Kay. If you've never heard of it, now you have. You're welcome. You're welcome. The next one is Herbalife. If you'd like to take that away, I need to. Yes. So Herbalife, I feel like everyone's kind of heard of. You know, in 2016, the FTC avoided calling Herbalife a pyramid scheme. However, they did conclude uh, most of the company's sales leaders were earning as little as five dollars a month. Oh, my God. And did warn that the company would need to prove that its business model is legitimate going forward. It is legitimate. They're getting five bucks. (laughs) They're five dollars a month. That's earnings. Hell, that's like. That's like one more than four. I literally just tried to do the math. (laughs) What? Five times 12? Please do it. Stop. What's five times 12? 60. Yeah. Okay. No, but that's 60. 60 dollars a year. That's a lot. (laughs) <laughs> it's two lego sets <laughs> it's like an amazon prime subscription yeah exactly um this was considered a victory for herbalife um who was faced who has faced many allegations in recent years mainly from bill ackman an investor who very publicly shorted the company's stock but it also included a belgian ruling that the company is an illegal pyramid scheme in addition the company faced a class action lawsuit by former and current distributors in 2004 yeah. And then, however, some reports have said that the distributors who received a portion of the $200 million fine in 2016 were actually loyal customers and used some of the money to buy more Herbalife products. <gasps> what is That is Stockholm Syndrome. What is Herbalife? Also, the FTC, for those that don't know, is the Federal Trade Commission. Okay, I was thinking FCC. No. What does Herbalife sell? Oh, it's like, um... Oh, it's like supplements and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, I might need to get some of this. Herbalife sounded pretty delicious. <laughs> All right. And the third and final one that we would like to mention is Amway. Yeah. In 1979, the FTC decided Amway, which let's give the official definition of Amway. Um, Amway is an American MLM company that sells health, beauty, and home care products. It was founded in 1959. So mm-hmm. it's like one of the oldest. Um, so let's go back. <clears throat> okay. In 1979, the FTC decided Amway was not a pyramid scheme because distributors were not paid specifically for recruiting new salespeople, just a commission on the products new distributors bought. Hmm. Hmm. This was a landmark case by the FTC and set the precedent of determining what kind of structure is considered a pyramid scheme and what's considered a legitimate MLM company. However, the FTC did force the company to make certain changes. Even more recently, Amway settled a class action lawsuit filed with the federal district court in California for $100 million, including even more changes the company must make to its business model. Like, just don't be an MLM. Yeah. That's the change you need to make. <laughs> just, just. However, the FTC has ruled that the company's distributors are selling the products to real customers and not just other recruits. So ultimately, they can continue on how they are. Yeah. That is, a, that's so crazy. I feel like Amway being around so long, there's no way that not every, like, I feel like people should have heard of this by now, mm-hmm. that, like, no one would just even fucking try working for Amway. It's insane, I guess. There still are. I bet that they've modernized in a way that's, yeah. like, I mean, hell, I was 20, almost worked for an MLM. Mm-hmm. I bet that there are people that have no common sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at two of them. You're listening to two of them. Who's got two thumbs in the podcast and no common sense? <laughs> Us. <laughs> Four thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's um that's, that's MLMs, guys. There are other like we're not gonna read them, but like Vima, New Skin, Fortune High Tech Marketing. I've never heard of that. Neither. Usana Health Services. And they're all more of the same where people are like this seems a little illegal. Yeah. And then they get investigated and they're like, all right, you guys can <laughs> keep on. You're making us good money. I think the one that scares me the most is United Sciences of America because it Tom sounds Cruise. so... Um, so it was created in 1980. It was uh, the United Sciences of America preyed on the health risks of the time and promised to protect people who took their supplements from HIV and cancer. Oh, no. Yeah. They fucked over people with HIV and cancer? 
What the shit? That is so insane. Not only are you a rat bastard, you're a rat bastard who like taking advantage of like sick people. At no, least with- they pro- they sold product promising to protect people from getting those. Oh, wow. Yeah, jackass. They even had a celebrity endorsement from William Shatner. However, NBC News ran a story about the company's fraudulent claims and sketchy advertising. The company's uh, 16 member advisory board were paid consulting fees and some were given $100,000 research grants. And in 1987, three states told the company to change their claims. Yeah. States told them to change their claims, which quickly led to high profile advisory board members leaving and the company disintegrating. Okay, so, so they were like, you have to change this. And they were like, actually, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is so crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Dude, it's like, what the... F- and William Shatner just looked him up. He's the guy from Star Trek. Wow. I would have trusted him. Right? I have no common sense. Have you seen that yet? But I'm neither. a huge Trekkie. Have you... <laughs> <laughs> HIV can't exist in the Star Trek cinematic yes. universe. I feel like cancer definitely has been mentioned in Star Trek, though. Name one episode. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, fuck, what was I going to say? William Shatner. Oh, you, there's the, um, you know, the meme of like, well, it's not really a meme, how The Simpsons has predicted like every major event in the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, they prevent, they predicted something of like the government, the U.S. government losing all credibility. So they have to bring in Tom Hanks to yeah. like deliver a message that just happened. Yeah. That's literally, that reminds me of that. Like William Shatner being like, buy this, Shepel Man. Yeah. And Tom Hanks being like. The state of the world isn't that bad. Yeah. We're Americans. Let's stick together. <laughs> yes. That's literally that. If they brought you in for something, what would they? What would the cause be? <laughs> you start, dude. Let's go, lesbians. <laughs> what would be the, the cause? Beers. We don't know, like, cause. Like, there's... I'm saying that, like, something isn't happening or something is happening. Either one. Or, uh, or you're trying to rally support for some cause. <laughs> dude, I don't know. You go first. <laughs> Fucking no. <laughs> Mine would probably be like a forehead support group. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> for, big foreheads back in the medieval times used to be a status of wealth and privilege and knowledge. Yeah. And beauty. Because your skull's where you keep all your money. Yeah. <laughs> and it clicks Bunch open. Bunch of coins rattling up in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of gold chocolate <laughs> coins. <laughs> wait, wait, no. So you would just be like, your message would be like, hey, guys. Big it's okay. Fore- big foreheads are okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doja Cat's got a big forehead. Rihanna's got a big forehead. Mm-hmm. I would say... um. Like for mentally ill lesbians, it's okay to be a mentally ill lesbian because yeah. I am one. Yeah, but I don't think anyone sees my life and they're like, they're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, there was like, um, so I have BPD, and there was like this girl like on TikTok was like looking for like famous celebrities like with BPD that she could like look up to. Like, oh, it's not that bad. All like uh, addicts and like stuff like that. And I was like, I, I was like, oh my god, me, <laughs> dude, uh, this is so fucking. I love being a statistic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, damn. But also, you know, it's whatever. When I found out Demi Lovato had... Uh, BPD? Uh, no, uh, binge eating disorder. Oh. I was like, period. I yeah. feel seen. I can't even... Here, let me try to find celebrities with ADHD so I can feel oh, seen. Oh, so many. Well, we, we don't know until I look it up. And also how much of that is fans being like, they definitely have ADHD. They're so quirky. Mm-hmm. Paris Hilton. I don't think so. Well, you know what? Paris I'm- Hilton. They're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Phelps and Paris Hilton. I feel represented. Someone with fucking 18 gold medals and then someone who's a billionaire. Celebrities are just like us. <laughs> Wide shoulders. <laughs> and I've been to a Hilton hotel. <laughs> I swam in a pool at a Hilton. I so, pissed and shit in a Hilton yes. pool. Okay. You ever go to Hotel Kids? Hotel. Oh. Hotel, hotel kids. Hotel pools as a kid. Um, yeah. You know what my grandma told me one time? What? <laughs> this is so awful. What? She told me that you can get HIV from sitting on the lip of a hot tub in a hotel. That is just grandmother spreading misinformation. It's just homophobia is yeah. really what it is. She told me that and I grew up until probably the age of 19 thinking that that was true. Mm-hmm. I had a similar thing. My mom is actually a doctor and so, but she's super Christian. So like she was like, when you have sex for the first time outside of marriage, you're going to get every single STD. Holy shit! And so she, <laughs> since she had medical journals, she sat me down as like a 13 year old and showed, showed me you. every single STD there was. And so then I realized later in life, I was abused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it back full circle. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. 
I um had a similar experience, but it was just um my doctor showing me skin yeah. problems that I had. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, this part itches. Like, I have a mole. And they'd be like, this is actually the condition you have. But like the most exacerbated yes. condition. Yes. Like I had this, I had this awful thing on my hands called um, acute dyshydrotic eczema. Yeah. And mine was a pretty bad case. And my doctor, my dermatologist showed me a picture of someone with it all over their body. Yeah. I was like, why would you show me that? This is going to be you. They literally were like, yeah. glad you came in. This could be you. <laughs> now see how it spread? Like they were trying to show me like the, the... I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Have you ever had shingles? No, I haven't. Isn't that like the chicken pox thing? Yeah, it's an intense fear of mine. Don't know why. Got a fear of shingles. Wait, have you had shingles? No. I heard they like hurt like a son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like people who had chicken pox are like immune. I never had chicken pox. Oh, dude. Fuck. Dude, and we live together. <laughs> no! Oh, shit. Have you ever had chicken pox? Um, I don't know. I think I might have. It seems like something I would do. <laughs> seems like me. <laughs> it was crazy back then. <laughs> Riddled with skin issues. <laughs> me now yeah. alright all well right. guys that's been um, this episode we t- we so many whatever this was uh-huh. we did not talk about MLMs we did we just like and now it could like you know spreads on social media that's basically what we do it does I didn't I wouldn't say it violates community guidelines but it just like is spread by the internet yeah. now because in COVID you have to go on the internet to preach these sort of things unless you buy a soapbox yeah and, and go a, and shout and on the street bullhorn yeah <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been Violating Community, community Guidelines. Do it again. Violating. Okay. Do so it again. Thank, thank you guys so much for listening. No, this do it again. <laughs> violating um, the Community <laughs> Guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please rate us five stars and then subscribe to us on YouTube, follow our podcast, download Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. We love you. <laughs> please kiss me on the mouth. <laughs> please, anyone. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>